Yo, what's up, y'all? My name is Jalen. I'm brand new to this YouTube thing. I don't know what I'm doing. So I think I'm supposed to tell you to like, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that. If you do all that, I appreciate it for real. I want to start this series called Faith Fundamentals, right? I want to uh, dive into some things, some practical tips for those who might be new to the faith, or maybe you've been around the church for a little while, but you ain't never really got into it for real. I want to walk through with you some practical things like how can I get close to God? How can I deepen or better my relationship with God? And so I really want to take this time and, and this opportunity to walk through some things and give us some practical steps. I'm not an expert at none of this. I don't have it all figured out. I don't got a PhD in Bible. I just want to share some of my insights and some of the things that I've learned over the years and hopefully prayerfully uh, that can help you. So for this first episode, I want to talk about prayer, right? Uh, I think there are some spiritual disciplines and some things that we should do uh, to get closer to God, right? I think prayer is one of those things, prayer, reading the word, worshiping, going to church, fellowship with other believers. I think those are all important. But I think one of the most important things for us to do as believers is to pray. And I think prayer is important because just like with any other relationship that you're in, communication is essential, right? That you have to communicate effectively with someone in order to have a healthy relationship. And I think the same is true with God, that God desires to hear from us, right? There's scripture in James that says, draw near to God or draw close to God and God will draw close to you. And so I believe that very scripture that if you draw close to God, that God will draw close or draw near to you. And so I think prayer is one of the ways that we can do that. And I really want to take this first episode to just talk about prayer and give us a basic kind of prayer one-on-one, right? What is prayer? How do I pray? Why should I pray? And answer some questions like that. So let's get into it. So first, what is prayer, right? A dictionary definition of prayer is that prayer is a solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God or an object of worship. So simply put, I believe prayer is just talking to God, right? It's communicating with God. I think sometimes we overcomplicate prayer. We make it something that it's not. But at a basic fundamental level, prayer is simply us as humans communicating with our creator. That's all prayer is, is just talking to God. Now, prayer might look different in different contexts, right? But I think ultimately it boils down to prayer is us communicating with God. So why is prayer important? I believe prayer is important because again, just like with any relationship, communication is necessary. And I think prayer should be important to us because prayer was important to Jesus. Scriptures show us that Jesus would often get up early before the sun was up to go out to a deserted place and pray, right? Jesus often would draw away from people to go pray. And so I believe if Jesus had prayer as an important part of his life, then I think we should too embody that, that, that prayer should be an important part of our daily lives. So this next question, I might get a little bit of trouble, but we're going to get into it. Who should I pray to? Now, I don't want to get too much trouble. This is the first episode. We still get to know each other. But I think that it's important to realize that we should not be praying to the creation, but we should pray to the creator, right? I don't believe in praying to the created things. Now, you have some folks who want to pray to nature and pray to all these. God bless you. That's your business. That's not that's between you and, and God and whoever else. As for me in my house, I'm praying to the God, right? The God of the universe, the God who created the universe. So I don't pray to created things. And I would encourage you not to pray to created things, but rather pray to the creator. There's a scripture in Romans 1, I believe. It says, uh, they traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself who is worthy of eternal praise. And so I believe a mistake that us as humans sometimes make is worshiping created things as opposed to the creator. But I believe that we should be praying to the creator and not to created beings, right? Think of it this way. Why would I want to serve or pray to a God that I could create or that I've created? I don't want to serve a God that I got to carry around in my bag or I got to lug around or I got to carry from place to place. No, I want to serve a God that lifts me up when I'm down, that cheers me up. I want to serve and pray to a God who is bigger than my circumstances, who's bigger than my problems, right? The created things can't, can't help your situation. The only one that can help your certain situations is God who is in control of all things, who sits outside of space, matter, and time. Now, I don't want to start preaching, but I don't believe in praying to created things. I believe that we should be praying to God, the creator of the universe, as the Hebrews would say, Yah or Yahweh, that we should be praying to this God in the name of Jesus Christ or Yahshua, as some would say. So the next question is, what should I pray about? Right. I believe Paul puts it for us very clear and plain in Philippians four. He says, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Right. 
I believe that there's nothing too big or nothing too small to pray about that we can literally take anything and everything to God in prayer. And I believe that God is interested in every single detail of our lives. And so there's some days it might seem crazy, but I say, Lord, what you want me to wear today, right? That I believe that there's nothing that God is not concerned about in your life. And so I think that sometimes that we carry so much on us, right? That we carry this weight and all of these burdens on us. And I think one of the ways we can get those off of us and lift some of that weight is by praying and casting our cares. As first Peter says, cast your cares on him, on God, because God cares about you. And I think one of the ways that we can lift some of our burdens and lighten our load is by taking everything to God in prayer. Doesn't mean you won't have problems, but it does mean that in the midst of your problems, you have someone to share the load and lighten the load. And that one is God. And so I think we should pray about any and everything because I believe that God cares about every part and every detail of our lives. So you're like, all right, I know I need to pray. I know who to pray to, but how do I pray, right? Jesus gives us a little bit of guidance on this in Matthew 6. Jesus says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. So I don't believe that Jesus is banning public prayer, but rather I believe Jesus is saying when you pray, to be impressive and to impress others and, and to put all of these big words together just for the sake of showing off to others, Jesus says that's the only reward you're going to get is with those people and the praise that they give you. But I believe Jesus is telling us that we should have a relationship with God. This is more so about this intrinsic, this inward reality between you and God, right? That you hear these people talk about that there's a difference in religion and relationship. And I think there is some validity to that, that we should be more focused on our relationship with God as opposed to performing for others. And so how do you pray, right? Jesus gives us a blueprint of prayer and you probably know it and you didn't even know right? The Lord's prayer. Jesus says, what? Well, when you pray, pray like this. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's what, that's worshiping. That's adoring the name of God, reverencing the name of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is saying that we should pray for the will of God in heaven to be accomplished on earth. And we should be vessels for the use of the master, right? Then he says, well, give us this day our daily bread. That's the next phase of that prayer that we should be praying for our needs, right? That God is willing and is able to provide for our needs so we should ask God for what we in need of, right? Some of us are lacking simply because we ain't asked God for it, right? Give us our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We're asking for forgiveness, right? We're asking for God to forgive us of our sins. That's this aspect and element of confessing our sin. And then also he says, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And so we should be seeking to practice forgiveness. And that might be a whole different video in itself, but we should forgive others as God has forgiven us. Then he ends it and says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so I don't believe that we should just simply recite this mindlessly, but this is more so of a blueprint of prayer that if you take it line by line, insert your own personal touch to it, then you can begin to pray powerful prayers because you're essentially praying the scripture and you're praying it according to the blueprint that Jesus gave. So how often should you pray? I think very simply, as often as you need to. I think you should pray in the morning when you wake up, pray throughout the day, pray before you go to bed. I don't think that there is a certain schedule that you that you should have to follow. That's just my opinion. But I think you should just pray. Now, if you want to follow a certain schedule, lay out certain times where you meet God, cool. But I don't think there is, biblically speaking, I don't know if there's a set time that you have to pray, right? I think you should pray as often as you want to, as often as you feel like it, that you should pray throughout the day. You don't have to pray long prayers, but just pray, Lord, thank you for this. Oh, Lord, help me with that. Oh, Lord, protect me. Watch over my family. These short prayers are just as effective as maybe some of the longer prayer that you may hear. So I don't want you to be intimidated thinking that because your prayer is not a long prayer, that's not effective. No, it's, it's more so about your heart posture than it is stringing all these long words and phrases together. And finally, one of the last questions I want to address is someone may be asking, what are the benefits of prayer? Why should I pray, right? I believe, again, if you look to Philippians 4 and 6, Paul says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I think one of the main benefits of prayer that I've experienced personally is peace. 
that you can be worried about one thing, but if you take it to God in prayer and really give it over to God, what song said, I gave it over to the Lord and he worked it out. That when you pray about it, when you leave it at God in God's hands, I believe that you lay your problems down and you'll pick up peace. And I think some of us are trying to find peace in every other place but God. But I believe that God will give you perfect peace. Isaiah 26 says, if you keep your mind stayed on him. And so where you may have temporary peace from pleasure, from alcohol, from drugs, wherever else you, your, your, your choice of peace is, I believe God offers us this perfect peace. And I believe part of that is praying to God. I think that's one of the major benefits of prayer. Now, there are a whole bunch of others, but I think one of the major benefits of praying is peace. So that's my two cents on prayer. Again, this is not an exhaustive list. There is a lot that can be said about prayer. I am not an expert on prayer. My goal and this purpose of this video is just to give you a few things to help you get started on your journey with prayer. Again, this is about you and your relationship with God. It's not about me teaching you everything about it, but it's about you taking the few things and a few nuggets I give you and practically applying this to your daily life so that you can begin to better your relationship with God. So I want to challenge you, as soon as this video is over, to pray. Pray about something. Don't got to be nothing long. Don't got to be deep. Don't got to be spooky. Just pray about it. It can be as simple as, Lord, thank you for waking me up today. But I want you to get started on your journey with God. Because again, it's about you and your relationship with God. And just as the scripture says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you. And I believe that God would love to hear from you today. So take some time to pray. Peace.